Wonderful, thank you. So uh, just um, a quick uh, sort of, well, it's not a blog, it's a congratulations, really. So uh, this is the list of health technology assessment funded UK-based uh, trauma trials. Uh, this is massive. There's 20 million quid's worth of tax-based money invested in you guys. <coughs> and why? Because you've been shown that you deliver on these um, studies. Is that important? Um, well, yeah, you've heard a lot about this. I'm not going to go into any more detail about it. Uh, we showed that at this point, to many, and I quite enjoyed this operation, that uh, if you could achieve a close reduction, actually the plates did as well as the wires, even in the elder patients, 85% uh, power. So why is that uh, important? Well, this is um, uh, something that some of you will have seen before. This is looking at hospital episode statistics in the UK. These are all of the distal radius fractures were fixed. Actually, sorry, in England, Scots can relax. Well, everyone gets Tom Bridge and fix as you just said. <laughs> so um, uh, this was just uh, in England. Um, in the five years before the draft trial, this is the number of plates going in. Consistent, three quarters of all the surgery was done with plates. The blue line is the wires. Uh, consistent, 10 to 15 percent, it was nothing. Uh, green is other things, fixed, and you uh, plastic acid and so on. This is what happened afterwards. So this is absolutely hardcore evidence of a change in clinical practice. And a really important thing about this is this change in clinical practice occurred before NICE got hold of the evidence for the uh, fracture guidelines that have come out earlier this year. This change in practice occurred before that. So you guys jumped with the evidence before you were pushed by the commissioners to start using fewer of these plates. Why else is it important? So I heard actually just yesterday, the Trauma Trials Day, that um, this slide, this change in clinical practice, is now used by Tom Worley, who is the uh, former HJ director, he's now the second in charge of NHR, internationally when he talks about change in practice by UK research, not trauma, by UK research. But we can use this as an example of how you can use evidence to change practice around the world in the way that Ian talked about earlier on. So really important for our reputation and we couldn't be in a better place at the moment in terms of our reputation. Are we, have we solved everything? Um, if you look really closely on the bottom here, very, very closely, deliberately in small font, you'll find your hospital. And this is what you do individually in terms of fixing distal radiuses. So there's variation still, and also variation in the number of procedures performed by centre. That's probably more worrying than something we've definitely got to address as a community. So uh, what's next? Uh, very quickly running through this because we're running out of time. So what did uh, draft tell us in my mind? Uh, so it told me that if I could achieve a close reduction of the fracture, then all oh, the yeah, age group saying sorry to disagree with Sam, it was very well counted, actually the total number in the over 50s group bigger than the original sample size for the trial, that actually there's no difference between plate fixation and light fixation, that the patient would benefit, the wires are cheaper <coughs> and they're uh, quicker to perform as well. Okay, so if we can achieve this close reduction, do we need to actually put the wires in at all, or can a moulded plastic cast actually work? <coughs> so this is touching on what uh, Sam and Jim were talking about. Now we agonised over this. Do we do this in just the older patients, which are what's been done before, Aurora's study and the Orkin trial from uh, Germany? <coughs> or is actually this idea of, can you maintain a close reduction applicable to all gistoradius fractures? And I couldn't find any reason eventually to not do that. And we discussed it with the Hans and so on, and they agreed. So what we're going to do, we're going to randomise patients who have achieved a closed reduction under image intensifying guidance. So this is not a go in ED, have you got it back? This is with an AI machine, you've done a closed reduction. If you believe, rightly or wrongly, that you've achieved an adequate closed reduction for that patient, we're going to randomise people to either have a wire fixation or to have a moulded plastic cast. Okay? If you haven't achieved an adequate closed reduction, you're going to do something else. Most commonly, plate fixation, that's what I do. And then we're going to follow those patients up as well. So we've got the full picture of this study. Maybe that's an introduction in draft. Who's in the study? Same principle again. Everyone. Everyone. So it's patients over 16 with a dorsally displaced disability fracture who, in the opinion of the treating surgeon, would benefit from an inflation you are in. You then go to theatre. This is the leap of faith. I do not want you to decide, we do not want you to decide, what operation is going to be had in the trauma rooms. Let's get out of that habit. So let's take them to theatre and then achieve a closed reduction and then we'll decide what intervention they should have. Where you have achieved a closed reduction, I'd like to randomise those patients to have the standard wire fixation, as per draft guideline and NICE guidance, or to have a moulded plastic cast. If you haven't got a closed reduction, go ahead and do what you'd normally do, usually a plate fixation. I think for most people, we're going to follow that group up as well. But we're only going to randomise those that have achieved an adequate closed reduction in the operating theatre. How you achieve that? 
is up to you. Uh, quite good evidence for using the beer blocks in the way that Sam's described, but with AI guidance is what we're asking you to do. It's got to be radiographically shown. Same outcome tools, same outcome measures, it's all about health economics. You can argue or toss about whether you believe in the functional outcomes or whatever, but if the health economics don't stack up, it's not happening. That's the fact of life. Okay, other things really quickly, just to tell you what else is going on. We're randomizing patients into Achilles tendon ruptures, following on for a child that uh, Tim has been doing up in uh, Edinburgh, to walking boots uh, versus plastic cancer for patients, people not optically contentious, I know we've talked a bit about that, and uh, both of us. We're uh, carrying on with the white trial, Sabies published the first two this year. Uh, white three, those of you here at the trials day yesterday will have heard the results of that. That's really cool, 1,000 patients randomized in eight months. <coughs> doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Um, and white four and white five are recruiting now, six out of eight subjects to funding. Watch this space, you can get involved if you'd like to. And then just something completely off the walls, so Steve Gwilm's idea. Um, anyone come across this? This is um, uh, the wood cast thing, that the guys on bone around in the, in the room outside. This stuff, I just think it's kind of cool, so let's do something about it. So this is um, a wood chip, plastic casting. You can eat this, it keeps you regular. Um, it's uh, not incredible. Um, and it can be moulded and remoulded in clinic at low temperatures that are not available to the patient. Does it work or not? Let's find out. So Steve's going to randomise patients who are treated non optically so they're not the ones in the draft 2 trial, uh, to either have this cancer or not. I know that may become a bigger study as time goes by. Um, the trials day yesterday, just a, a quick mention, many, quite a few of you were here. Um, I was criticised, but I think quite rightly, I didn't advertise it. We never do, really. It's kind of not invitation only, but it's for the research teams. But next year we'll integrate it much more fully, and if you'd like to come along, get involved in the studies or just hear what the results and how things are going. You'd be very welcome to. Um, we're in Bristol next year. The trauma trials day is on the 10th with the OTS on the 11th and 12th. And that's it. Thank you very much.